Hi guys, welcome to this video. And in this video, we're going to look at the typical uh, pain referral patterns for the shoulder, for the ligamentous and joint capsular tissues of the shoulder. Now we're gonna start with the coracoclavicular and the acromioclavicular ligamentous tissues. Now these typically will refer pain to the distal end of the clavicle and also to the top of the shoulder. Now if you notice, uh, there is some pain referral that does occur down through, uh, in through the pec area, sort of, sort of where pec minor would be. Uh, maybe a little bit of short head biceps also, because short head biceps, pec minor attach onto the coracoid process of the scapula. And um, when you're working with, with your patients, you've got to also remember that, um, that these, these tissues, you know, they, they send danger and threat messages up through uh, the peripheral nervous system into the dorsal root ganglion and uh, either at the dorsal root ganglion or at the spinal cord or at the brain uh, levels uh, they can cause a referred pain to occur and that referred pain for these areas can be down into sort of the, the distal end of the wrist into the wrist and a bit into the thumb also uh, most likely because you're getting that hypersensitization that occurs in through about the c5-6 nerve root that occurs um, you know, we had, a, we had a patient who was a, uh, a weightlifter bodybuilder who had been in the gym and he was uh, doing bench press, he was doing uh, some type of uh, upper, upper body uh, strengthening activity and he felt sort of a shift that occurred in through his shoulder. He immediately had a sharp shooting pain, he dropped the weights, he stopped what he was doing and, um, and he went and saw a, a different medical professional who said, oh, you know, you probably separated your clavicle, you probably dislocated your shoulder, you did something to it. Um, he elicited a lot of negative thoughts in the patient, that the patient had done some type of severe amount of damage that um, the patient needed to stop his activity completely altogether um, because there was a potential for increased damage and increased pain and uh, a decreased quality of life to the patient. And when I saw the patient, it was about six weeks later. And what we had determined through uh, some more in-depth history taking was that the patient had increased his, his level of, uh, of weights in, in frequency, intensity, and duration of, of lifting. He'd increased it a little bit too much. And what had happened is that the tissue hadn't really been damaged at all. Um, but that there was more of, of, a, of a tolerance issue with the nervous system. And the nervous system had been challenged a little bit too much. And again, it elicited a threat danger uh, response that went to the uh, you know, central nervous system that elicited this, this, this ache, this, this unstableness, this weakness, um, and this sort of pain response that was typical to this pain referral pattern with the patient. And when I investigated with the patient, if he had been back to, you know, back to working out, he said, no, he hadn't because he was fearful of damaging the, the tissue. Now in doing some strength tests and doing some neurological tests and pain provocation tests, doing some, you know, active passive resistant range of motion tests with this patient, we determined that his tissue was very strong. It was, it was fine. He had full range of motion full stability through all of the tissues in through this area. There was no potential for dislocation or for separation or for uh, more damage to occur. And getting him to go back into the gym and start from the basics again, starting from the very beginning of a low dosage, low frequency, low intensity, low duration uh, of uh, sort of like a great gradual return to lifting program and uh, he was very fearful about uh, causing any more damage uh, in the area. So once we were able to you know, reassure him that his, his tissues were strong, they were stable, they were capable of withstanding the load, uh, we, we very easily um, got him back into the gym, got him again working out with a low dosage to slowly increase the tolerance for these tissues and for the, for the nervous system. And within about two or three weeks, he was back to lifting, um, you know, at, the, at the, the weight level where he had initially sort of felt 
uh, the the discomfort in his shoulder. So it's it's really important that you know in in determining what these uh, pain referral patterns are that you also take your time and you investigate with your patient exactly how it happened and again bring some pain uh, pain science uh, into into your treatments with your patient. Uh, the next image that we're going on to is the glenohumeral joint capsule. Uh, this uh, these tissues will refer a diffuse ache, uh, discomfort, maybe a numbness into the lower arm, the wrist, and the hand. Um, so you get a lot of patients where they may have suffered some type of mechanism of injury to the glenohumeral capsule, either through the anterior aspect, the superior aspect, the posterior aspect, and it can cause this referral pattern that can be uh, down through the biceps, maybe the triceps, and down through either the palmar or dorsal aspect of the forearm into, uh, into the wrist and the hand. Um, it's pretty common sense that if they've had some type of fall or injury where uh, they've had sort of an anterior inferior dislocation or sort of a posterior inferior dislocation and it's either the posterior joint capsule or the anterior joint capsule that's been affected or sometime they've had some type of impact where the, the head of the humerus has been pushed up into the AC joint. You get that superior glenohumeral ligamentous tissue that gets a little bit irritated. Sometimes also with long head biceps where there's been sort of a long head biceps strain on the labrum, um, you can get pain that is very specific into those areas and it, it feels very deep. It feels very uh, joint, joint capsule ligamentous. Um, with the patients and a lot of the patients will will say to you it feels very deep it feels deep within my bones um, that's a clear indication and uh, that that something has happened through those tissues there may be some damage there may just be some hypersensitivity in through the area um, it's also really important to uh, report to your patients what the current understanding is for glenohumeral and also for the hip and the pelvis for uh, uh, femoral acetabular labral tears. Uh, th with the more imaging that happens around the world with CT scans and MRIs and, and fMRIs uh, and ultrasounds, it, you know, it's, it's really showing that the norm these days is to actually have a labral tear. So we have people walking around everywhere that have got labral tears, varying degrees of labral tears in their glenohumeral joint capsule and in the femoral acetabular joint capsule, and they're completely unaware that they have these things because they're just functioning in their day-to-day -day life. They're not really challenging that labral tear um, you know, and increasing the tolerance of the tissues. Um, so, so the norm is to have a labral tear. Uh, and then sometimes you have some type of fall or injury or motor vehicle accident or something that sensitizes the nerves in through those areas that innervate those tissues and then you get these pain referral patterns. Um, on to the next joint is the sternoclavicular joint. Now this one gets divided into the anterior and the posterior sternoclavicular joint. Um, with the anterior sternoclavicular joint it refers pain to the anterior chest and along the sternum, while the posterior sternoclavicular joint refers pain deep within the upper thorax. So it, it's kind of common sense. The more superficial, the more anterior the tissue is that is having, that is being hypersensitized, that's where the referral pattern is going to be. And the more posterior, the more within the body of the tissues that, uh, that is being sensitized, you're going to feel more of a deeper um, a deeper uh, sensation through those areas also. Now if you compare the anterior posterior sternoclavicular ligament to the next one which is the costoclavicular ligament, it's slightly different. Now this is going to re again refer pain to the anterior chest wall along the sternum and the clavicle um, and it's going to refer pain deep to the upper, uh, upper mediastinum and the thorax. It's going to be a lot deeper than either the anterior or the posterior sternoclavicular joints, uh, joint capsule referral patterns. This is going to feel, feel very, very deep within, within the thorax itself. Whereas, you know, anterior, posterior, uh, sternoclavicular pain referral patterns, it can sometimes feel very superficial, very skin, very pec major, a little bit of superficial um, sternum through here. It might also go a little bit into the throat. With the costoclavicular ligament, it's going to feel deep within the thorax. It's going to feel inside. Um, in the shoulder course where I run you through the techniques for treating an anterior posterior sternoclavicular 
joint tissue or for the costal clavicular, sort of the anterior first rib technique, your patients will, um, they, they usually will comment on these pain referral patterns and they will typically say, at least with my patients, they've told me that these costal clavicular ligament pain referral patterns are very deep within the thorax. It feels like it's lung it feels like it's mediastinum. Sometimes they'll actually feel it go through and through. They'll feel it um, through the anterior aspect. They'll feel it directly into that T1 costal transverse um, joint capsule tissue also. It's not a radiating pain where it goes around from the anterior to the posterior aspect. It goes through and through. It goes you know, from one all the way through to the other. So um, keep a lookout for those pain referral patterns with your patients. Uh, discuss with them, you know, what they're feeling. Sometimes it's, it's pain, sometimes it's not pain. Again, you have to really watch your terminology and um, really use the terms that your patients use. Try not to put terms into your patients' uh, descriptive descriptions about what they're feeling. You know, at, let them describe fully what, what they're feeling. If they're feeling tense, if they're feeling stiff, if they're feeling burning, if they're feeling numbness, tingling, pins and needles, does it feel achy? Does it, is it a sharp ache? Is it a dull ache? Um, or is it pain? And is it is sharp shooting pain, a dull ache pain? Um, you know, really, really use a lot more descriptive terms uh, and use your patient's descriptive terms when you're communicating with them. So, um, so this was the video for the pain referral patterns for the shoulder. And uh, on to the, we're gonna be going on to the next video, which is the pain referral patterns for the uh, spinal column. So we're gonna be looking at cervical spine, thoracic spine, and lumbar spine. I'll see you in the next video.